Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm back with another Swiss poster design video. Over the past couple of weeks, my daughter and I have been watching Clarissa Explains It All on Nickelodeon, and she has been loving every minute of it. And I've been trying to come up with some ideas to do more Swiss poster designs because I know that you're all liking that. So uh, while I was watching Clarissa Explains It All with my daughter, I was like, well, why don't I just make something out of that? So I'm going to go ahead and get started, but before I do, please remember to hit like and subscribe below and also click the bell for notifications to be notified of all new content. Now, let's go ahead and make this poster. So if um, I'm not going to spend any time uh, teaching how to set up the Swiss uh, poster grid, um, if you want to see that, you can check right here for that video. Um, but basically, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into my Swiss grid um, layout that I've got going on here. And as you can see, like this is kind of like a modernized version of what the color palette looked like, but I'm gonna go a little bit more into the like the opening credits and just kind of grab those colors. And so for something like this, I'm going to like, yeah, you know, when it comes to things like this, I don't like the, um, like this current age or generation or whatever, like I don't like their interpretation of what our generation looked like, <laughs> you know, like, not everything was like super crisp and clean uh, the way that it is now. And it, it, it's kind of like, you know, oh, like, oh, I want to put together a color palette for what the 80s look like or what the 90s look like. And, you know, like if, if you were to do like a Google image search of, you know, like retro 90s, it looks like it looks like um, it, it, it looked like it, it looks like somebody in the current day their interpretation of what they think the 80s look like or or, or, or like you know, i don't know i'm just kind of rambling but i like it to be as authentic looking as possible so these colors right here are definitely from the opening credits and then i'm just going to kind of grab um like a yellow and a green from here i may make some adjustments here but these are really just going to be like accent colors but i want to make sure that they are you know that they're in line with uh, with what was going on at the time, especially the early 90s. Everything was very neon, you know, like real bright, vibrant colors. And I definitely want that to be reflected here in this uh, in this poster. So um, yellows were a little bit more on the yellow side. Um, and and and, uh, and you definitely want to um, uh, make sure that you distinguish uh, the two of them uh, from each other, like those yellows and greens there. So I'm going to go maybe just a touch more, not that much more. I'm using a different mouse today than what I'm, uh, what I'm used to using. So just kind of bear with me on that. And I'm just going to go and just kind of make a couple of adjustments here, like almost to where it's getting like into an orange territory. So I think that's looking good right here. So these are going to be my, the colors that I'm going to use. And I'll go ahead and just delete this graphic right here. And let's go to our align and just align them like that so I can just kind of grab them. All right. And uh, as far as the typography goes, um, I'm, I'm going to obviously do the, the show's title and also like uh, some of the cast members and everything. Uh, but I'm also going I'm also going to go uh, completely classic with this. So we are going with uh, Helvetica Bold um, with this. I think that it just... I think it's just going to work a lot better if, if we do it that way. And, and plus, like the kind of the goal with this particular poster is to make it look like it was it was actually made uh, back during the 90s. So, um, all right. So um, just like I do in my in my Swiss grid uh, tutorial, um, I'm going to base this at, you know, like a factor of like, you know, uh, 30s. So like uh, this right here, I'm going to start probably at, a, at about 210 point right here and may, actually may even go all the way across and that would be uh, 270 okay and then so Clarissa and let's just see what happens when we type out the rest of it I wonder if I should do that right there well it is a title so I think I'm gonna well maybe I'll just let's see Okay, I think that looks good. And let's go ahead and hit, well, okay, I already did. I already hit uh, optical alignment. But what I'm gonna do before I do anything else is I'm going to align this to my grid. So let's just kind of grab right here and I, I align the actual glyph itself. So that's just, that's just the way that I like to do it right there. And this is actually going a little bit out of the edge, so I'm going to bring this in a little bit, 
And then of course we'll need to make some adjustments over here on this side. Um, just really just got to push it up uh, right here. So, um, so this is our main uh, title, like our main uh, like heading text, if you will. And um, uh, just in case, just in case you're wondering, it is 18 by 24 inches is what the the size is for this poster. All right, so I've got my sizing there, but my my letting is just uh, it's definitely too much. So I'm going to go in here and just kind of adjust this. Um, I'm going to do it optically. I'm not going to do anything mathematically. I just want to see what it looks like. And let's go ahead and take the grid off. Okay, we obviously need to push that a little bit. We don't want that P touching that A right there. So I think that that is looking good. I wonder if I if I did this, if that would change anything. Um, it is changing it um, a little bit, but I just think it's a little bit inconsistent. I think I'm going to uh, keep that uppercase A. All right, and then now let's go into here and do our own manual uh, kerning. And just kind of go in and make sure that we get everything in there looking good. Um, kerning is something that you, you just kind of have to you kind of have to, you just get better with it the more you do it. So basically, you know, like obviously you don't want the letters touching unless that's the visual style that you're going for. And of course, it also depends on the font itself. But you want to make sure that you keep uh, plenty of space between the letters without giving too much or too little. And of course, kerning really can come down to uh, to your preference or your opinion of how the type uh, looks, you know, because um, there's, you know, you, you could do a thing where you do all of your tracking and you can, you know, you can really spread out the letters if you want to, if that's the style you're going for, or if you're going something like with a classic uh, Swiss design, like what we're doing right here, you want it to be, you know, clear that it wasn't just typed out and that you actually spent the time in going uh, going in and making sure that the uh, that the letters look um, as good as they possibly can okay so now that we've done that we've actually pulled it in a little bit more so I'm gonna push this out and then we'll just kind of go right here and I'm just gonna get it right to the outer edges of that grid okay all right so what I like to do uh, first is I like to lay out all of my type first and then apply the colors. So I'm gonna do that. All right, so for something like this, our main our main um, heading is uh, is 270. So I like to do um, see like divided by uh, divided by two to get the next one down, so it's half the size. And what I think I'm gonna do here, since this is a um, since this, uh, it's a uh, TV series is I'm gonna go in and find the name of the creator. Clarissa explains it all. And okay, uh, Mitchell, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Mitchell Kriegman, Mitchell Kriegman, so sorry. So, let's see, created by Mitchell Kriegman, okay. Um, it's not really a hard and fast rule to stick to your um, divided by two or half the size, um, but it's it's generally a good rule, you know, like um, generally generally a good uh, rule of practice just to kind of get an idea of it. You can make adjustments if you want to, but this is just something that uh, that I like to do. So I think I'm gonna go back up right there and then maybe divide it by three because it's just a little bit too large. And so now let's go, I'm going to maybe sit this right there at that grid and let's optically move this over to where whatever is going to hit that line first, we'll do that. And then we'll give this plenty of space there. Okay, looking good. And now we just got to go in and adjust the kerning in here as well and I'll just go ahead and speed up this portion of the video so that you're not too bored by all of the kerning okay that's all looking good right there and now what we're gonna do is gonna uh, we're gonna add the names of the main cast members and I think from this point I think I'll do maybe half the size of that and just kind of see how this all looks and since there are only five people in the opening credits, um, I'll just I'll just put the uh, put those uh, names down. 
And actually, let's see, if we did this, let's see, it's divided by three instead. There we go. So that way we can actually follow the same uh, rule that we've been doing. So like this is the, your, main, uh, your main text and then we divide it by three and then divide by three again. So, all right. So now let's adjust our tracking to about right there. And I've seen this show so many times. So let's see if I can actually remember the names of all of the cast members that are in the opening credits. Uh, this is testing my Nickelodeon, my 90s Nickelodeon trivia. Okay, so Melissa Joan Hart, obviously. And let's see, is it Jason Zimbler, I think? I'll obviously go uh, go in and make sure that I uh, make sure that I get all of these correct. Uh, Elizabeth, I think it's with an S, Elizabeth Hess, and um, uh, Joe O'Connor, and oh, his first name is Sean. Sean. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, I can't remember. Okay, oh, it's Elizabeth with a Z, okay. Sean O'Neill, okay, there we go. And then Jason Zembler, I was right. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and do this. Ah, there we go. All right, and now we're gonna change that to a Z. Perfect, okay. So I, I, was, I almost got all of them right. <laughs> all right, so let's do this. And maybe separate those by, let's see if one inch looks good, or maybe I think closer to half inch, I think is gonna look the best. Okay. All right, so there is all of our type. And then what I'm gonna do is, I, I'm actually gonna go back into this image right here, and we're gonna do kind of some things uh, like this, or at least pull some inspiration from it, okay? So first thing I wanna do is I'd like to do um, I'd like to do the main uh, title and just kind of give that a color. And I'm, I'm really not going to pay too much attention to uh, like Swiss, Swiss color principles necessarily. I, I actually want the colors to be more, um, more in line with what the show had. So I'm, I'm kind of breaking that rule a, a little bit. So really what I'm doing is I'm doing the actual layout principles of Swiss design. Um, but really just ignoring the colors. And you obviously want it to be legible, so let's go in and maybe make this this the same color as this. I think we'll keep the type um, as uh, pink and blue. I, do, I would like to see what happens if we swap these colors. And just in case you're do, you're following along or doing anything similar to what I'm doing, if you uh, if you notice when you uh, when you click on this uh, when you click on this right here, you've got this selected. If you go to your eyedropper tool and if you click uh, just on your mouse, uh, then, then what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to pick up the the properties of the the size and the color and the tracking. It's going to pick up all of those text properties. So I'm going to hit undo. And if I want to make that the same color, then all I have to do is go to the eyedropper and hold down shift and click and it'll just pick up the color. All right, so I think that looking at this, I think what I'm gonna do is introduce a new color, maybe like a like a charcoal gray or something like that. I think that's gonna look uh, better to do it that way. And then now I'm gonna add uh, just a couple of design elements, not anything too crazy. Um, but uh, right here, I'll show you how, uh, how we do like a squiggly uh, like a zigzag line, uh, kind of what we have here. It's very simple. So just go up to effect and uh, distort and transform and go to zigzag. And you can actually choose whether you want smooth or corner. Um, so I think I'm gonna do just kind of a blending of the two. And you can also choose the rides per segment. So the more, the more that you have here, the more it'll add. And I kind of, I do kind of like the stair step uh, thing that it's got going on. I don't, I don't hate it. So let's just add in uh, this right here. And basically, I'm just wanting to do, um, wanting to do, you know, just kind of some of the things that you see in the opening credits. And you could also go over here to stroke, and we can just make it nice and rounded, right there. And 
You could also do, so uh, these little, let's see, let's make it smooth. So I'm using the pencil tool uh, for this where we do like these kind of squiggly type of things. This kind of looks like a number two. So, you know, just kind of grab this and just kind of trace over it if you want to, or you can just create your own you and do whatever you want really. And since we have the smoothness turned on right there on the pencil tool, uh, it's turned all the way up. But if you were to go accurate, I'll show you what it looks like. So I'll just kind of do, like, I'll make sure that it's still nice and smooth in terms of what I'm doing. But what, uh, as you can see here, it's gonna it's gonna make it a lot more jagged. And maybe I'll turn this down to uh, one point so you can see it more clearly. So this is the actual this is the actual um, anchor points that are on that stroke. But if I were to turn it down here you can see it's nice and smooth so it smoothed everything out for me and then since i want there to be a little bit more space in between there just kind of go like that and then again hold down shift on your keyboard to click and you'll pick up just the color and i think i'll do the same thing here we'll just kind of go down to 10 point right here and then we can also do something like this um, and for this, I'm just going to use the pen tool just because it's easier to just kind of grab and create just the way that, you know, exactly the way that the shape is right here. So I'm just going to pick up on this shape. And since these are all perfectly, well, not perfectly straight lines, but they're straight lines, you know, from, from one end to the other, there are no curves going on. Just kind of grab something like that. Uh, I think I might want to add uh, want to make it a little bit bigger. So this look that's looking pretty cool Let's pull up our grid again so we can align this object to the grid And again, like I said earlier, I just want to say it again since uh, you know, just in case there's anybody out there having a heart attack right now I'm not following a 100% um, Swiss design. I'm just following the overall principles and the grid um, So like as far as the typography goes, it's Swiss as far as the elements go They're definitely a little bit outside of uh, what you would find in Swiss design uh, But this is you know, just kind of combining like a 90s uh, like early 90s aesthetic and color palette with Swiss design and uh, I think what I'll do here, just to show you how to do this, right here, if you wanted to create like these little bubbles, it's very simple. All you gotta do is create and get your ellipsis tool. And then what I do is just hold, uh, hold down on the option key and just drag, and that creates another one. And then you can just kind of enlarge it a little bit and then go through and each one of these just manually just change the size. So that right there, I'm gonna enlarge that one, but on this one, I'm gonna reduce it to about right there and you know you can obviously go in and create your own if you want to and you can you know you can do your own research um, in terms of uh, the you know the different types of shapes and overall aesthetics of the designs that were that were popular in the in the early 90s and do kind of a similar thing uh, right here just don't just don't do it the modern the modern interpretation way like I like I call it um, you know, make sure that it's nice and authentic. All right. Um, let's see here. Oops. I meant to group that all together, and I'll just go ahead and unite it with my Pathfinder. So that's looking pretty cool uh, right there. I think the uh, I think the blue starburst may be the only thing that's actually aligned to the grid. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get these. Uh, objects aligned to the grid optically and of course if you go into outline mode you'll see that the lines right here are not actually aligned to the grid but the shape itself is aligned to the grid and that's where really what we care about is what it looks like visually and not technically okay so let's go here and maybe go right here something like this and then just kind of bring this down maybe right here and then rotate it a little bit and now we can stick this up against our grid again very cool I think that we could probably use one more going from maybe here to here 
And since we're not, uh, you know what? I think I'm gonna spread out the colors a little bit. So let's make that one green. So we got green, yellow, green, yellow, and then blue. We're not really showing a lot of love for pink here. So let's go ahead and bring this pink in. And I think I'm gonna go with another zigzag, but this time I'm gonna make it uh, a smooth one. So kind of like that. And I'm gonna go 12 rise, I like that. All right, very cool. So here is the, here's the, the all vector version uh, of this Clarissa Explains It All poster. And I think that, let's take a look. I wanna see what happens if we change this to blue and see if it's still, it's still legible. I think I'm gonna go in and darken those a little bit. Just darken the blues. You know, still want them to be nice and nice and vibrant, but I think you can still achieve it. There we go. That's much better. Okay. So now it's uh, okay. So now everything on here is legible, and all of the little uh, swirlies and little design elements and everything are also still legible. But I think I'm gonna also go in and just kind of darken that green a little bit, not too much, because then it starts to look muddy, and you don't want to do that. Okay. That's looking cool. I like this. Okay. So I'm going to select all of this and copy it. And I'm going to go ahead and take it over into Photoshop and apply just a couple of very simple effects. All right. So I'm here in Photoshop. We're at hundred percent view. This is, um, I'll show you the 18 by 24 and at 300, uh, for full resolution. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to add just a very slight layer of noise here. Um, you don't want to add too, uh, too many effects to, um, to Swiss design posters because then it starts to get too complicated and that just gets away from the whole idea of Swiss design. So we've got a good, I think 10% is what we put down here and just put like an overlay on it or maybe a soft, actually I think overlay is going to be best. I don't know how well you can see this right here, but it's just a, a slight layer of grain that we've got going on there and you can really barely notice it. It's, it, it's, uh, it's more, it, it's more so just to add a little bit more of, um, of detail in, in the actual, um, in the actual text and the actual design elements themselves. So here it is the finished product of the Clarissa. Let me zoom it out just a little bit. Clarissa explains it all Swiss design poster using Adobe illustrator and finishing the effects up in Photoshop. So, um, I hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something, uh, while, uh, while you were watching, um, watching along with me designing the poster here. I really enjoyed this one. I always like this, uh, this, these color palettes, these early nineties color palettes. So if you like this, uh, uh, please, uh, please uh, hit like and subscribe <laughs> also down below and also click the bell for notifications and drop whatever you learned in the comments. And also let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you'd like me to do uh, as far as Swiss design posters go, because I'm always looking for new ideas. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.